Okay, try this again. Take two. Let's see what happens. Here I was hoping I got it right the first time. Okay, I guess we will try again. So if there is someone in the chat, please let me know what you see. That would be great. Okay. Going with this a second time. Cool. So good morning. I am here. You are here. This is exciting. Um, it is Thursday, which is one of my favorite days now because I get to hang out, which is great. And yeah. All right. So today I'm working on Marshall's map. I have the pencils done and I am I'm going to be working on doing the liquid frisket on this map today. This is going to be a watercolor map. So I need to uh, mask in the parts that I don't want covered by the water um, for the oceans that are around the perimeter of this map. To be doing this, I am going to use a combination of these new Epic uh, Fine Line fluid tip pens. Uh, what these are are masking fluid in a handy little squeeze bottle that have fine gauge needles attached to the top. So they come out of these metal points here, which are hollow, which allows you to lay them down in a really fine line, uh, which is super great for doing detail work like coastlines. So I am excited about the possibilities of that. I've played with them a little bit and I quite like them for what I have used them for. This is the first time that I will actually be using them on a map. Um, there's a needle on the inside that goes down into the shaft of the needle that you use to distribute the product and it helps keep everything from gumming up, uh, which makes getting the cap back on a little bit interesting sometimes. And then the other product that I'm gonna be using is this drawing gum, which is kind of my go-to I use it all the time and uh, it's just super handy. Uh, I have my ratty ratty brush that I put it on with. Do not use your good brushes with this stuff. It is a liquid latex. It will completely destroy anything that you're using it with. So if you've got a brush that's on its last legs that you don't care about getting messed up, this is the right kind of application for that. So yeah, I'm gonna start doing the finer stuff. I have a whole bunch of islands on the outside of the map. Um, so I'm going to start on the left hand side of my paper and work right because I'm right handed and that will stop me from kind of running back into myself as I go across. The thing about working with liquid latex masking fluids is that they are not sticky but like they'll grab you um, when you run your hands across them later. So you kind of want to make sure that you're not having to like run your skin over it too much because you'll accidentally bring up the frisket uh, and unmask the stuff that you've worked really hard to mask. So I've been finding with um, these needle applicators that one of the best ways to do it is a lot like um, icing sugar cookies. Do your outside border and let that set up and get nice and firm and then kind of go back through and flood the inside. And what that does is just gives you a barrier so that you can't kind of overshoot the border that you've set up. Yay, Laura found us. That means that the broadcast is coming through. <laughs> Excellent. How you doing this morning, my dear?
You have a prego cat. Oh no. I'm sure that was a situation you didn't necessarily want to find yourself in. Is this one of the cats that you're fostering? Oh, at seven months, that's pretty young. Oh, yours. Were you waiting until she was a bit older to get her spayed? Tiobini from Disenchanted. Yeah, affording it is definitely a thing. Her brother is Lucy. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Well, I'm sorry she got out on you. That's a complication you probably didn't need. You can probably hear Saxon walking around in the background. Sorry about that. My needle get gummed up. Don't do it. There we go. Whoever designed this bottle top and the tip and everything, this is brilliant. I don't know that I would have come up with that on my own. It's pretty fantastic. I guess I could trade over to the larger gauge needle. That might make this go faster.
I guess I'm not super talkative this morning. I'm sorry. I'm just realizing that I'm not really saying much. Things have been so busy over here. I'm just kind of trying to find my feet lately has been a bit of a struggle. It's posting season, so for the Canadian Forces, what that means is people are being moved to new locations uh, or taking up new jobs in locations that they're currently in. And uh, that can be a really stressful experience because usually it means that you're moving to an entirely new city, often to a new province. Um, and so you're going through the pack and the move and the saying goodbye to people and all of that. Um, and the system that gets used for arranging the moves and stuff, it's not like a standard, you just call a moving company and handle it kind of thing. Um, and there's a lot of frustration and bureaucracy that goes along with it too. And so one of my best friends is leaving this Saturday <laughs> unexpectedly. Uh, we didn't think that they were going to get posted out for probably another two years. And then out of nowhere, um, her husband was asked to go to Iraq and she's been asked to relocate to Ontario and it's just come on really fast. So having a lot of emotions about losing a good friend and just the stress that goes along with helping her try to negotiate this whole moving process because it's pretty intense. And then another one of my best friends might be leaving and Dave is mugging out, um, which is like the going away party sort of thing because um, he will he's deploying for the year and then when he comes back he won't be in the unit that he's in currently uh, he'll be in a different one so there's lots of little like social things that you have to go and do as part of these processes and people have got medical appointments and because I don't work during the day I'm well don't work I don't work out of the home during the day um, there's been a lot of just going and helping drive people to things so that they're safe and I'm not complaining like it's definitely all stuff that needs doing and it's stuff that I'm happy to be able to help with it's just made life really really busy lately and I have missed being at my desk just doing my work <laughs> and all of that hi Saxon what are you doing what you doing Goomba nobody I am doing my stream right now I will play with you later. You guys, he's just sitting here giving me puppy dog eyes. So. But yeah, things have been absolutely chaos over here for me for the last little while. And it's coming on the heels of six weeks of having people either live with us or visit us or needing to take care of a friend's child because of things going on and I'm just ready for some peace and quiet <laughs> I'm ready for things to just kind of be how they should be for a little bit I'm gonna miss it all right because as soon as Dave leaves I'm going to be by myself for a year so I feel really guilty kind of lodging any kind of protest about any of it but it is a little much at the moment. So trying to put a good face on it. It's the best I can do. And then I just broke my own advice about not going in one direction on this map. Good job, self. I have to say the sound of the needle going across the paper is kind of satisfying. It is true. Self-advice is absolutely the hardest to follow. And sometimes that offends me because I give very good advice to other people, or so I've been told. And so, like, clearly that means I should be giving myself good advice. But apparently that doesn't mean I always follow my own advice.
<laughs> you know, I'm super glad that you think so, even after all these years. But yeah, I was really excited to actually be able to do the stream today because I was just like, yes, please. <laughs> Uninterrupted hours at my desk. Nicole called this morning. Well, not called. She texted wondering if I could help do some stuff with the move, including taking her dog for the day. And I was like, I can, but I can't until after my stream. Please understand this is important and it is getting done. And she was like, but of course, excellent. There's like a little series of stones right where I'm dropping this right now that are blocking a bay. And it makes me super grateful for this needlepoint. It just is gonna make doing that so much more precise. Yay. What kind of dog? Chimo is a Boston Terrier. Um, we call him the genetic lemon. Uh, whichever breeder was breeding him was not being responsible about keeping things properly mixed. Um, he is one of the sweetest dogs you will ever meet. Like I absolutely love his personality. Uh, he's a gem of a dog, but he's got... <laughs> really really mixed up eyes and his tail pocket is not quite right and there's just a lot of things that are very um Frankenstein about him in terms of his appearance he reminds me a little bit of that patchwork dog from the nightmare before Christmas the kind of ghost look at least I think that's the film I'm thinking of um so yeah it's kind of just like oh boy like, he's adorable, and I freaking love him to death. But it's also just kind of, okay, what's going on for you, bro? Corgis are funny. I just think that the way that they move is hilarious. A bulldog, hey, I love bulldogs. I like their work in terms of taking care of their skin and stuff, but I think they're cute. That might be a holdover from watching a lot of Bugs Bunny as a kid, though. I like big dogs. Like, that's always been a thing for me. And Dave, I think, is just German Shepherds forever, so... That is a thing. Uh, 
I completely just did this like backwards to what I wanted to do. Hmm. Oops. I'll have to let it dry and peel it up and do it again. Do you watch Drag Race at all, Laura? Okay, so in the second last season, I think, yeah, um, there was a contestant named Vanji Mateo, and she had a very meme-worthy exit from the first episode of season 10, and uh, it's become a running gag in my D&D &D game, because our new dwarven cleric is Vandal, so... Whenever he does something really silly, we'll be like, Vandal, Vandal. And Steve doesn't watch Drag Race, so he doesn't know why that's as funny as it is, but it cracks Lisa and I up every time. It really was, like... Honestly, very funny. We just about got our butts handed to us last night in game. Dave is not, like, challenge balancing anything for the game that we're playing right now. He's just rolling random encounter tables, and we have to make the decision about whether or not we're going to stay and fight the thing or run the hell away. And we definitely underestimated the thing we encountered last night what we thought was just like a drow scout was a drow priestess who had like a crap ton of spell slots and it was not good all kinds of enlarged things fighting us and oh yeah it was a time Saxon, just lay down, buddy. There you go. He's trying to get settled under my desk. Yeah, Oops was right. Like, it was just about a TPK towards the end. And I felt pretty silly about it. But I don't know what else we sh are supposed to be doing. Like, we're supposed to be investigating the threat to this dwarven outpost so we're trying to do that but apparently it's a big threat and we are not prepared although we're doing it and sometimes pulling it out of the air so i think dave is amused and a little bit perhaps frustrated <laughs> Oh, cool. Is he enjoying it then, I'm taking it? I love that there's D&D &D groups that are popping up in schools now. I think that is just super cool.
That's awesome. Good for him. Plus, like, lucky him, because you guys live for sentry boxes. I love that store. We went there after our anniversary weekend in Three Hills and dropped way too much money. It was good, though. It wasn't too much. Like, we could afford it, but I'm not used to spending that kind of big ticket anything on <laughs> hobby stuff. So... Hi, John. How you doing? How are you? Congested? Oh, no. Like allergies congested? Or are you getting sick? Or worse, do you have a forest fire near you that is clogging up your life? Because that's a thing here. Crazy allergies. I'm sorry, my friend. That friggin' sucks so much. Let's just put a couple little legs in here. Again, I'm doing them backwards. Oh, brain, stop with the thing today. Yeah, it is the peel stuff. So these ones are in fancy little squeeze bottles that have uh, needles on the top. So this one is a 20 gauge, so it's a 0.5 millimeter head. This one's an 18 gauge, so it's a 0.8, so this one's wider, this one's finer. And uh, I really love them for doing islands and coastlines and stuff because you just get a pile more detail and then I'm using the stuff in the jar to kind of fill in my major land masses so that I'm not wasting the dr look at this masking fluid booger gross where am I gonna put you um, and this is why you store your masking fluid upside down I should completely have listened to Myrna on that score. Come here. Ugh. Gross. I mean, the good news is it peels cleanly off your fingers once it's dry. It's just unfortunate until it's dry. So what I did, John, was I just went around the edge of my landmass here with the fine line stuff to put in a more detailed coastline. And then I'm just filling in the main mass with this stuff. I imagine that the main mass is going to be easier to see just because this stuff is tinted blue where the other stuff is untinted. But it is still there. It is a big map. Yeah, it's 11 by 17. Um, that's the size that I'm pretty much working at constantly right now, although I have an 18 by 22 coming up, which I'm excited about. Um, I find that smaller than this I can do, but it tends to get really, really dense. A larger map gives a bit more space, keeps things a bit more balanced. Because there's a limit on how small I can draw, and that limit is pens. But yeah, because this is a watercolor map, typically my order of operations changes a little bit for watercolor. If I'm doing just a black and white map, 
I go from pencils into inks and then it's over. If I'm doing a watercolor map, it goes pencils to frisk it to water, like getting any of the major water masses done, um, to taking all of that off once everything's dry, all the frisk it off, and then inking the land masses, and then going in and doing the color for the details that are on the land. So it takes a bit of time and a little bit of a different process, but I like it. It's kind of fun having the back and forth. How many jars do I go through doing these maps? This jar I have done mm, five or six maps on so far, and I'm still, I have a third of the jar left. So it doesn't like take a ton as long as I'm not doing massive maps. Like the map that I did for Patreon for April and May was really big. Um, it was a full sheet of this 18 by 22 paper. And so it took a lot of frisket because I did fairly large land masses, but totally worth it. This stuff's not too expensive. Like this jar was $7 and 80 cents. These with the applicators were more, I think it was 15 for both, or maybe it was 20 for both. I can't remember. I got them from jetpens.com. Um, if it's a thing you're interested in, um, but just the applicators like are worth it and then you can refill them. So it's cheaper because you just buy more masking fluid and put it in there. But I just kind of consider this like a part of my process now in terms of assessing costs and stuff like that. Cause it's pretty integral to what I'm getting up to. But yeah, I, I imagine I'll get seven or eight maps out of this, which means it works out to about a dollar a map. I'd probably get more if I was doing like smaller maps, but that is not a thing right now. I'm thinking about doing a map for Dave while he's gone of like the Greyhawk setting or something. Um, cause he has asked for one of my maps to just hang up in the house. Oh no, stop. Don't do that. Don't peel up. You're not allowed. Um, so it might be nice to do one in a campaign setting that he's really attached to. So we will see. The jars, you mean, doesn't sound too bad? Like the cost per jar kind of thing? Or doing a map from Greyhawk? Yeah, wall posters are where it's at, man. Dave doesn't run like a world campaign where he's created the world. That's not his real style for DMing. So it's not like I can draw his world and kind of bring that together for him the way that I do for other people. But a campaign setting that he loves will probably be the same.
cost. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, I would say in materials per map, like for a map this size, I'm probably pushing between seven and ten dollars, depending on what paints I use. And that's just because like watercolors are fairly expensive to buy up front, depending on what brands you're getting. Um, but you don't need a ton of them, like they last a really long time. So I mean, depending if I'm using liquids, they go faster than if I'm using my bricks, but still worth it. It also depends on like what quality of paper I'm using. Um, I'm using a mid-grade paper most of the time. Like it's archival, it's acid balanced. Um, it's made for what I'm doing, but it's not like I'm going to spend $60 on one piece of paper. Because you can, especially for watercolors. You can get some very, very expensive paper. Um, so... I could like really go nuts in terms of the materials and do like gold leaf and all kinds of things, but I don't think I've had any clients who are super interested in going that far right now. And I need to do some experiment with some of those materials before I'm even comfortable offering them. Like the gold leaf I really want to do, but it hasn't, I haven't had the time or the money to really invest in just playing with that because gold leaf is really expensive but it's on my list maybe I'll do it for Dave's Greyhawk map get that all learned because learning is fun I gotta say, being able to do the coastlines separately from the land masses has really taken a lot of stress away from me. This is pretty great. Coastlines with gold leaf, I think, would be amazing. And I'd love to do my mountains with the contour lines where all of the lines were gold. Like, basically take the black out of a map and just do all of the black line as gold. I think it could be amazing. Uh, there's a watercolor painter that I follow on Instagram named Stephanie Poyman Law. She is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant watercolorist. And she does fantasy art and has been doing amazing things with incorporating gold leaf and metallic watercolor pigments. Um, I absolutely love what she does and would love to try to figure out how to reproduce some of those effects because they're pretty freaking cool. One of the things that I've found is trying to find that happy medium between the kind of paper that I'm using and this particular product. Because I've had papers that are softer and pulpier that this stuff just shreds, uh, which is not the goal. So, Yeah, the pour acrylic pours with the cups. That's so fun to watch. I like it a lot. I feel like I'd have a hard time doing it because that's a lot of excess paint a lot of the time. Um, and I just don't know how I'd feel about that as a process for me, but man, I love watching other people do it. It's just so cool. Um, have you looked at alcohol-based ink stuff, John? Um, like the dropper inks?
It's so, so cool. The end of my paintbrush is this ball of latex, you guys. Uh... I imagine this isn't the most, like, wonderful thing to watch, but I'm grateful you're here. Oh yeah, like, body painting latex would be a thing. I don't know anything about the process, but I wonder if at that point when you're putting down that much material, you're not using, like, a silicone paddle style tool. Um, I have a couple of silicone brushes. Um that are really neat like i they make a very different mark than a fiber brush and they're really fun i just I'm still trying to figure out how to kind of incorporate them into my regular practice i think it's partly because i've moved a lot into watercolor and they're really intended more for acrylic or for like carving when you're doing sculpture and stuff come on there we go. That would make sense. I imagine you got to be really particular about cleaning your airbrush after that, though. I've done, like, significant body paints for cosplay stuff before, and it is weird for me anyway. It feels almost a little claustrophobic, which is funny considering that there's, like, not really that much on you. But I sometimes feel that way in a full face of makeup. Like if I'm wearing like a liquid foundation, which is part of the reason why A, I don't wear makeup most of the time, but B, when I do, it's almost always powders because I just feel like my skin is more normal if it's that. I remember, I think it was uh, Rebecca Romjan who played Mystique in the very first X-Men movies. A lot of people were really upset because it looked like the character was nude all the time. And she basically said, like, I don't know why you guys are freaking out. I'm actually wearing more square inches on my body covered than I do when I'm a swimsuit model. And I thought it was a really interesting kind of rebuttal to all of that um, on, like, the morality of, of the appearance of nudity versus like relative nudity so <laughs> you are probably not naturally ugly <laughs> don't say that yeah dry skin can be tough for liquids for sure
I'm just kind of over the beauty industry. Like, I like wearing makeup when I want to, but I have way more in common with, like, makeup wearing drag queens than I do with, like, Instagram models. Well, I should hope you don't think you're Elephant Man ugly. You're not. I've seen your pictures. Oh, man. Stop. Not you, John. Sorry, I was having a latex run. I don't know if you guys could see that on camera. That's pretty cool. I'm glad that he feels safe enough to be doing that. <laughs> you definitely do make pretty babies. That is a true story. I think your kids are part fairy. Just gorgeous. I think I'd probably make like pretty babies, but I wouldn't want to wish all of my bullshit on them. There is a reason I'm not reproducing. Some of us have to be the cool ants. That's my position on children. My sleeve is sticking to the latex that's already laid down on this other side. So every time I go to pick up my brush, it feels a little bit creepy. <laughs> I'm not sure the world runs on cool ants, but I do think we're a contributing factor to certain things. I'm just happy I'm not getting asked a lot about like, when are you and Dave having kids? I hate that question. It's so invasive. It's like, how is this any of your business? I don't understand. Ah, stop latex. There we go. The end of this brush just looks so ridiculous. I don't know if you guys can see it. I have no idea if that focused or not. The stream is lagging. Like, I can see farther back in the past when I look up at the replay on my screen. So, nah, that didn't focus. Sorry, guys. I tried. Let go. There we go. That's good. I'm glad it seems fine to you. 
Yeah, but that would be like an alternate timeline for sure. I'm super grateful we don't have them because the idea of like having to navigate deployment with children, like I'm watching Nicole go through that right now with her daughter. Her daughter is 10 and her husband is deployed to Iraq right now and this is the first deployment since Caitlin has been old enough to really kind of remember. So there's some stress for Caitlin just wondering like how is this going to go and all of that kind of thing and I don't mind being like the cool aunt in that situation and being able to be reassuring and whatnot but I'm very grateful I'm not in a primary parenting role dealing with those kinds of questions. <laughs> that might be a little disorienting, hey Laura? Yep, I think that this whole being able to outline the coast thing before filling it in is genius. And I am excited about it. That is making my life much easier. Yeah, I have a lot of mad respect for the people I know who are military parents. Like, it is a whole different kind of life, and I didn't understand that very much before I got into it, which is fine. I'm here now, and I have no regrets. Um, but parenting in this structure, it's something else entirely. Hey, if we just dab the brush instead of scrubbing it... That's a little bit better. Things you learn by accident. You know, I suppose that makes a ton of sense and I should have thought about it sooner. But here we are.
Do, do, do. Huh, yeah, cool. But yeah, my goal is to have Marshall's map done. It won't be by Friday. That had been my original plan. But by Monday or Tuesday next week. And then I'm taking the rest of next week off because Dave is on leave. And then I will be back to my desk for another week. And then I am taking two more weeks off because Dave is on leave before he deploys. And then I will be back to work full time after he is gone. I just figure I kind of want to max out all the time I can spend with him before he leaves because, you know, only seeing each other twice for the next year. I don't know what we're going to do with leave. I think we're going to build a sofa, an outdoor, like, couch platform thing for the gazebo because I would like somewhere to sit out there this summer that's not a folding chair, which is what I'm currently using. I'd like to go camping if we can do that because we've never been camping with Saxon so I think that that would be fun um, we're gonna see of course his parents and my parents and do all of those rounds so that everybody can say what they need to say and whatever I'd like to go to the mountains really hey Laura did you see that Jasper's expecting snow today <laughs> Like, a lot of it, like it was snowing in the Okanagan yesterday. Hello, climate change. How's it going? I wonder how confusing it is for, like, bears when things snow out of season. Or if they just kind of roll with it. Well, presumably they roll with it, but I wonder what they think of it. There was a tree that was just cut down in our neighborhood, and I asked Dave if the missing tree, if he thought the missing tree changed the tenor of the conversation among the trees in the neighborhood. He just gave me such a look. He doesn't have fanciful thoughts that way. I have them a lot. He's just like, you're weird. I love you, but you're weird. And it's true. I am. I'm okay with that, though. Yeah. All right. Have a good one, John. Enjoy the rest of your day. I will post pictures as I go. I might post a peel video to the map group just because people seem to get a kick out of that the last time I did it. Yeah, Vancouver does shut down. But to be fair, snow in Vancouver is weird. Like, we get traction with our snow because it's not continually trying to melt. But Vancouver's humidity and the ambient temperature with the ocean being right there really does make it very strange, particularly to drive on. I, like, I, will, I will say that in Vancouver's defense because they get ragged on a lot for it. But yeah, it's a thing for sure. Yeah, your weird compliments my weird. That's a thing for sure, for sure. I think that's like one of the goals that you can have with a friend or a lover. I was talking with a friend of mine yesterday while we were driving and... I said, I think it helps that our points of rage align. <laughs> she was like, what do you mean? I was like, we get offended by the same kinds of injustice and different things about inequality and, you know, the unfairness of life. And I feel connected to you in some ways because those are values that you hold and we have this in common. And she was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. I've just never heard it put that way. And I was like, I don't think I've ever expressed it that way before either. So that makes two of us.
<sighs> yeah. Like awesome rainbow octopuses that show up at my house. Because they're pretty cool. Have you been cross-stitching lately? A latch hook train. Latch hook? Like carpet? I don't understand this term. What does it mean? Like a shag carpet. That's cool. I have a latch hook rug under my desk, actually, that my grandmother made for me. And it's of a train, like a, like a kid's train or a passenger train. I'm so grateful that this stuff can just be peeled up. This giant blue dot over here is just staring at me like, you made a mistake. Oh boy. Do do do. Just the locomotive. <laughs> so it's taking a little bit to get done, is what you're saying, right? Yeah. That's fair. My mom had one cross stitch that she worked on for like 18 years because she only ever worked on it when we were camping. So that was a thing. All right, my darling, we are at the hour mark. I am going to attempt to pull all of the latex out of this brush once more and see what we are left with. Um, and then I am going to do the masking up for the compass rose, which is gonna take more time. So I'm gonna do that off camera just so I have full range of motion. Um, I will probably broadcast next week but like I was saying a little bit ago I don't know if I will or not because Dave will be on leave it'll kind of depend on if we decided to stay here or to go away um I will post on Facebook though um uh, once I know what the plan is and so that will be a thing and yeah other than that I'm around I will try to be more regular about posting up to Instagram but yeah things have just been wildly busy lately 
and not with art stuff. So you just make do the best you can with whatever situation you're in. So I am going to go. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will catch you next week. Well, or the week after that, but I'll be back at some point. Catch you later. Bye.